Hello, this is one in a series of lectures from the Seas Health Corporation. Um, we have different type of lectures and th this particular series is designed for patients who are coming in to see us in the clinic or who were addressing their patients online. These lecture lectures are educational, uh, again, for the patients who are coming in not intended to manage individual patients. They are not a substitute for seeing patients by healthcare professionals. Among the reasons are patients vary and no brief presentation substitutes for formal training. So in general with C's Health we focus on a variety of problems, increased function with age, non-surgical injury restoration, injury prevention and fitness, particularly in fitness in people with chronic diseases like diabetes and coronary artery disease. My name is Mark Brzezinski. Um, just briefly, I'm a functional movement and fitness specialist since the 90s. I've been, I was trained and been at Harvard Medical School since 1988 from education uh, uh, to residency and fellowship to attending Mass General and Brigham and Women's up until this year. Um, my residency is in internal medicine. My fellowship at Mass General and Harvard Medical School was in cardiology, but I was simultaneously doing functional movement at the time, and I formally moved to the orthopedics department as an internist in Harvard Medical School in 2000. I have a PhD in exercise physiology, certified personal trainer, and besides my functional uh, uh, fit, m functional movement training, I also have uh, training from physical therapy and orthopedics in the classical surgical exam that uh, you see with orthopedics, PT, and uh, athletic trainers, for example. Uh, I'm the first winner of the presidential award from President Clinton uh, in musculoskeletal disease, and I've sat on large numbers of NIH committees, including I've been on the NIH Osteoarthritis Committee since its origin in 2002 that oversees the arthritis sites for the National Institute of Health. So one, we point this out in many of our lectures that one of the problems in the field of musculoskeletal disease, why do people not get better, is in our opinion the fact that if you look at fields like neurology and cardiology, there's surgical branches, neurosurgery and cardiac surgery. But for orthopedics, there is no internal medicine branch. And so we feel that the, uh, the, the exam is uh, designed to identify surgical problems, which isn't a criticism of orthopedic surgeons. That's what they do. And there's also a large lack of outcome data because you look at, pay, you look at um, neurology and cardiology the actual outcome data, how, uh, what works, what doesn't, comes from the medical end predominantly, not the surgical end. So to start off with why your knee hurts, I, we're going to discuss it because, when, you know, the idea that somebody walks in, their knee hurts, and you focus in on the knee sounds uh, logical, but it's actually, um, it's counterintuitive that most of the problems in the knee don't come from the knee. And I use this example of the uh, lake houses up where my family is from in Pennsylvania. It's on the largest natural lake in Pennsylvania. And the foundations have problems all the time, but it's not the foundations. You can keep patching the foundation, which is the way a lot of these musculoskeletal problems are treated, focusing in on the joint, but the underlying problem is the high water flow off the mountains and the high winds, particularly the jet stream coming from the high altitude. So the goal is redirect water, redirect wind. 
and not just keep repatching the fountains, which is a futile battle. So three areas we'd like to discuss with respect to causes of knee pain, and these are kinetic chain, uh, the nervous system, and how both of these are affected by gait. So the kinetic chain for this discussion means that all bones, joints, bones, muscles, and ligaments, and a weight or force bearing system can't be viewed in isolation. For example, when looking at the spine, all the components from the foot to the spine are affect each other. Now the knee in particular, the knee is a dependent joint. It's heavily dependent on the muscles of the hip, particularly the gluteus maximus and medius, and also the rotator cuff muscles of the tip, and the ankle muscles, particularly tibialis posterior and um, the Achilles tendon, but also on foot position. And it's also dependent, as we'll illustrate, on the nervous system. Proprioception, uh, people know it roughly as balance. But the, you know, a large fraction of knee problems come from problems in these areas. And even when you see uh, traumatic injuries, such as in um, contact sports, very often it's failure at the hip or ankle of the nervous system that actually causes the knee to have serious injury rather than the trauma per se. So an example of a common case, and before I go into this case, I want to illustrate from an animal studies, actually two animal studies, one done by our group, one done by another group. If you inject Botox in a fully anesthetized rabbit uh, so that they feel no pain into their um, quads, the muscles in the front of your legs, then they'll develop arthritis in the knee even though you don't touch the joint. You just uh, weaken the muscle. Similarly, if you, in, again, fully anesthetized rats, if you induce arthritis in one knee, the opposite knee that's completely untouched will be, um, will develop arthritis also. And so it's clear that the problem isn't originating just at the knee. So in this common example, the patient walks in and they say their knee hurts. They get the traditional orthopedic exam focused on the knee. They get an MRI, which shows a meniscal tear and we go into a lot of our lectures that if you look at joints, very often you're just going to see uh, potential surgical issues, but that doesn't mean they're the cause of the symptoms. The patient gets mis meniscal surgery and they still have problems with their knee after the surgery. So why? So again, in that last video, there's a little problems with a video on video on YouTube, but the knee just was wobbling all over the place on a single knee leg squat. And that's due to either problems with the muscles in the hip, the ankle, both, or neuromuscular control. So in the case, in the previous case, the traditional classic exam in MRI yielded the wrong diagnosis. And we can look at the effect. This is generated with a kinesiology program. When you just internally uh, invert your foot, then your knee suddenly is in, um, is pushed inward. This affects the way the kneecap tracks it, uh, makes the knee susceptible to more problems on the inside of the knee, such as meniscal tears or tearing of ligaments. And so uh, the knee, uh, again, is affected by both the hip and the ankle. 
and uh, it's a very dependent joint. And you can imagine if you do this while during gait that the problem problems are going to be exacerbated. Now, the nervous system is very important, and it, it's very important in a large number of ways, but we're going to use one example. And so, you look at proprioception um, means knowing where your body is in space, roughly, from your joints. So, I we try to have, for instance, skiers be able to stand on each leg for 20 seconds with their eyes closed. Because your brain uses three, you use three parts of the nervous system to know where you are in space. Your inner ear, your um, eyes, and the receptors in your joints and skin, in your limbs, and it's coordinated by places like the cerebellum. Now, if you don't know where your limb is in space, when you have your head turned, then suddenly... Uh, you don't know where your leg is, and you can actually blow your ACL. And it's very common when you talk to skiers or runners that when they blew their knee, they actually weren't looking in the forward direction or the direction they were moving, so they didn't know where their limb was. The tibia moves on the femur, and it blows the ACL. We tend to think of ACL injuries as traumatic injuries, you know, there was something mechanically done wrong. And we don't take into account the neuromuscular component. So, you know, this is emphasized that for balance, as an example, needs it to be an important part of life. And it's often forgotten when people come in with knee pain how critical this is. And then these problems just get worse with gait. We, we walk on average four to 5,000 steps per day. And when you walk, uh, you know, if you're off in any way, you're just continuously hammering the joint or joints that are off or muscles or ligaments or tendons. And so it all comes down to having a great gait and aligning it getting your neuromuscular uh, system and neurosensory system along with your kinetic chain in line. So again, when you come into our office, we're going to focus in on the kinetic chain, the nervous system, and gait, along with, um, you know, the traditional knee exam. But don't be surprised if we don't order an imaging study of the knee because we feel that the problem is not with the knee itself, it's somewhere else. Again, these lectures are intended for patients coming into our office. They are not a substitute for patients seeing healthcare professionals. Among the reasons our patients vary in no brief presentation. Substitutes for formal training. Thank you. Have a nice day.